Hey guys, those Communications, and welcome to my review of Snakes on a Play. And, um, as soon as I got myself in the right mood for this one, I actually enjoyed myself. I had a really, I had a good time with this one, I really did. I have to say, it is a bit underrated. I mean, for what it is, it's actually pretty good. I mean, you got, you get snakes, you get a lot of snakes, a lot of snakes do a lot of different types of snakes. A lot of snakes do a lot of different types of things in this movie. There's a decent amount of gore in this film that was actually added because of the fans wanted it. Um, and there's a lot of snakes in this movie, and they do a lot of things. And you know, and um, Samuel Jackson is a badass in this. He's very likable. He has more than he's, there's more to his character, more to his performance than just the immortal lines. You know, that nope is enough. I've had it with these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane. Those, so, so, you know, now buckle your seatbelts. It's time to open some windows. <laughs> uh, any, anyway, um, that's pretty much a lot of people remember the movie for is that line of dialogue. It, it is, it is one of the greatest lines in film history. It's so absurd, but it's so awesome at the same time. Anyway, also, I also thought the supporting cast in this film was pretty strong. I thought a lot of the people, I thought the film did a good job with the, the cast members, with the people that were, you know, on the, on the, you know, who were, um, you know, were on the plane, the, the passengers, other than just, uh, Samuel Jackson, um, uh, Ju Juliana Margulies, Marg, Juliana Margulies as Claire. I thought she was great. I thought she did a fantastic job. I thought she was really good. Nathan Phillips is Sean, who's a guy who uh, who's a dirt surfer and a dirt bike racer, witnesses brutal murder committed by Eddie Kim, and he ends up he gets he's uh gets he ends up being assigned Samuel Jackson's character agent Neville Flynn to protect him on his flight to Los Angeles, and Bobby Carnavale is as special agent Hank Harris, Flynn's contact in Los Los Angeles. I thought he did a good job. Rachel Blanchard is Mercedes. Mercedes who is pretty much kind of a parody of one of the Hilt, you know, one of the of Paris Hilton in a way with her dog and all of that. But she was likable and she wasn't honestly I looked at it as that more of like a parody of the of the Paris Hilton thing than really kind of a bad person. I mean, she seemed like she had a good heart. So I really didn't mind her. Uh, Flex Alexander is Clarence 3G's, a famous rapper who's a germaphobe who is a germaphobe. Um I thought Flex Alexander did a pretty good job as well for what he was asked to do. I mean, this is a movie actually that I watched. I didn't watch it all the way through the first time because I just watched the piece of shit hijacked with Randy I can't at Couture, and um, it already put. I guess it put me in a bad mood. So I mean, it would put anybody in a bad mood. Watch hijacked, and you'll be in a bad mood, and you won't be in the right mood to appreciate a movie like this, which is just pretty much a dumb fun. Uh, flick. It is a. It is not smart by any means, but it's not boring and it's exciting and it's actually a lot of fun to watch. Uh, it doesn't take itself seriously, and I think the film is a lot better for that. How can you take this idea seriously? You have to have fun with this idea, snakes on a plane, with such a ridiculous title. You have to have fun with it and go all out. And I thought the film did a lot with the premise. Uh, Keenan Thompson, I didn't mind him either as Keith Dallas. Uh, you know, Keenan Thompson as tr tr as Troy, uh, and Keith Dallas wasn't too bad as well as Big Leroy. Uh, Keenan Thompson plays one of Clarence's bodyguards. Same same for uh, Keith Dallas. Lynn Shea had a good cameo as Grace, the senior flight attendant who acts as a flight's pursuer. Um, Terry Chen is Chen Leong, a martial artist who was among the surviving pair of passengers. I thought he did did a good job for what he was asked to do, but he didn't have barely anything to do. But but he was likable enough. So I, I like Terry Chen. Uh, Elsa Pataki is Maria, a female passenger, brings her infant son on board. I thought she was solid. Sunny Mabry is Tiffany, a flight attendant who develops her chest crush on Sean. She was all right. She was just basically there to be eye candy for Sean. Really, that's pretty much it. But she was personable enough and likable enough. Emily Holmes is Ashley Tyler's wife. Uh, she, I thought she uh, was was um, did a solid job. Captain Sam Tom Butler is Captain Sam McKeon, uh, captain of the plane. He really didn't have that much to do because he was he was likable enough. He seemed like a nice guy. I, I felt he did a good enough job. I felt bad when he died. David Kirk Cockner as Rick, Captain McKeon's co-pilot, co co who's been in a lot of comedies lately. He was a likable character. 
I had some funny lines to say. Brian Lawson, I thought, did a decent job as Eddie Kim, uh, the crime syndicate leader. Uh, Tom DeLuisio is Dr. Stephen Price, a snakes venom expert. I thought Tom DeLuisio did a good job. I liked his characterization of this. Uh, uh, he, he added enough of original sort of uh, take to the character. It didn't seem really that boring. And Scott Nicholson. There's Scott Nicholson as Daniel Hayes, a U.S. prosecutor who's murdered by Kim at the start of the film. Uh, Taylor Kish has a cameo in this. Who uh, attacks and he gets attacked? You know, Taylor Kitsch this is one of his earliest roles. I I knew it was him. I was seeing the scene. I'm like, is that Taylor Kitsch banging that chick Kelly in the bathroom stall, wanting to get in the mile high? You know, mile high. Yep, yep, that is. Yep, that's Taylor Kitsch. And uh, Kevin Mc McNulty is Emmett Brow Br Bradley, an air traffic tower controller. But they don't mention the asshole British guy. I'm on Wikipedia. Come on, you gotta mention the asshole British guy. Who was an much of a big enough of an asshole to literally feed uh um Mercedes's dog to a fucking anaconda so he wouldn't get his ass eaten. Paul, played by Gerald Plunkett. I got me such an ass in this movie. Anyway, um Snakes on the Plane just applies this. I, I'm just I don't even need Wikipedia for this. I don't need Wikipedia for Snakes on the Plane. Snakes on the Plane, the gist of the plot of Snakes on the Plane is pretty much what it is. Snakes on a Plane. Uh, it, the movie begins with uh, sort of like a vacation sort of look. Like it's kind of like a, a, it kind of feels like a travel resort sort of ad. And you have this fun, upbeat soundtrack. And you have this character, uh, Sean, who's a dirt bike and whatever. And he ends up witnessing a murder. He ends up witnessing Billy Kim killing this poor guy. He hangs him on a tree and beats him to death with a bat. So then he sees this murder. Uh, Samuel Jackson realizes that comes in and the, comes in and saves him. Pretty much, he's about to get hunt, uh, hunted down at his home, and Samuel Jackson comes in and helps him, saves him. He he basically keeps telling. He tells him this line. Uh, he says, uh, "Do as I say, and you live." And, uh, so it even asks, like, Sean later on in the film, like, what did I tell you? What did I tell you, really? What is the first thing that I told you, Sean? Uh, no, 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 after that. Um, do as I say and you'll live? Exactly. Do as I say and you'll live. <laughs> so I, I can't really do Samuel Jackson impression. I can't. So forgive me. You know, I can't really do it. Um, but, um, anyway, so he ends up, you know, Putting put under, put under a police protection by Samuel Jackson, they end up he ends up getting permission from the FBI to uh, take basically take over this flight uh, from Hawaii. What's funny is this take starts out in Hawaii and Honolulu, and it's at the Honolulu airport. And I was born in Hawaii. I was born in Honolulu, Hawaii. So it was kind of like it was like hey hey I get to see a little bit of the place I was born in. Okay, but not really in person because I still haven't been there. Yeah, I was born in Honolulu, Hawaii, but I haven't been there since I was, you know, born. And really, I don't remember any, I'm, I was too young to remember any of it because my mom and my dad divorced when I was like five. So I don't remember anything. And then they moved, my mom moved from Hawaii after my mom and my dad divorced to the Pacific Northwest. So I don't remember anything about my time in Hawaii. Um, but, uh, so it was kind of fun though to see that Honolulu, Hawaii. So then the Honolulu airport. And uh, he ends up putting him on a, on a Boeing 747 and basically makes it so the flight is changed. So now all the first class passengers have to sit and coach. This outrageous, this asshole British guy by Majera Plunkett, who um, he really is such an asshole. I'm going to see if this line is on here. I don't know if they do. It was like, yeah. Um, Trying to find it. I don't know if they got it. I don't know if they have it on here. Uh, I don't think they have it. I don't think they have it. But Gerald Plunkett, you know, playing this. Paul. So Paul is a complete douchebag. And he basically, what happens is... He says something, the gist of something like this. He's talking to the flight attendant. She's like, I'm sorry for your inconvenience. I'm, you know, uh, we're, 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 uh, we're, we had an emergency and now all of, 
uh, flight first class passengers have to be the co put to coach. And the reason why this is happening is because this is a way for Samuel Jackson and his other partner to keep an eye out on their their witness, uh, Sean. So then you know nobody can you know first class can come in and and kill him or whatever on the plane or whatever. So this this really is a precautionary reason. And this Paul guy is a complete douchebag about it. He's like, so I'm sorry for the inconvenience. Well, you know, this isn't going to help me get to my meeting on time. Now, is it? He's like, um, sir, uh, I, as far as I'm aware, all passengers, including coach passengers, get to their destination on time. Oh, I wasn't aware that your, your uh, job description uh, came with sarcasm. It was just like such an asshole. We were like, what a fucking dick. <laughs> and uh, and then he actually ends up uh, later in the film. You see him. He gets in, into his seat. He gets in his seat, and he's just still being a complete douchebag. Like you see everyone else around him. He's like looking annoyed at them. A baby crying with a rattle, and all kinds of stuff like that. And he's like freaking dog, freaking coach. Freaking Americans! <laughs> it is just like it's like, oh, I'm sorry, he can't hear you. I'm sorry, he, you know, his hair plugs aren't gonna hurt you, hear you his hair because of his hair plugs. <laughs> so it just, just did that type of you know flick right here. You already know what you're getting into when you, when the movie starts. Um, and uh, there's there's a lot of fun lines and things like that, but um. Pretty much, uh, you know, pretty much you watch the film for the snakes. And the snakes pretty much come into play about 30 minutes of the movie. And what happens is Billy Kim set up this, uh, paid off this snake expert guy to smuggle snakes onto the plane. And then use this pheromone, which makes them go fucking nuts. It makes them go crazy. It makes them super aggressive. So when the snakes then just start ta attacking, they attack the, ca the captain first. And that makes the plane go into a tailspin. The you know the the air the things pop out from the top of the you know top of the um you know the air mask top out and then snakes pop out and then all these people were getting fucking wrecked by these snakes we were get bit by the snakes the the couple Taylor Kish is banging some chick in the bathroom stall he gets bit in the dick he's like ah my dick there's a snake on my dick ah <laughs> he dies and I'm like yes that's for battleship you piece of shit. That's for Battleship. For sucking so much in that piece of shit movie. Yeah, take that snake on the dick, Taylor Kish. Because <laughs> your acting sucks dick. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's spitting on the dick. And uh, snakes come in and they mess up this one this one chick. She thinks she's getting pleasure. Like she's having a, a wet dream, a sexy dream. But really it's the snake who's went up through her dress. Uh, you know, up. Uh, Basically up to her chest, massage her breast, whatever, and then pops up and says, "Ah, oh, peekaboo! You weren't having a, a, a you're, you're not hot enough to have a, a a hot dream. I'm here to eat you <laughs> right now." But there's uh, all this other kind of stuff. Snakes attack more people. I think the film did a good job making it. It was pretty suspense. I thought it was pretty freaky. You know, I thought the CGI snakes held up pretty decently well. There was an actual, there was a few real snakes at points in the film that you saw that helped uh, helped it. And so it's just a free for all. All these people are like, "Oh, there's fucking snakes in the plane," and they're running away from snakes. People are getting bit by snakes and dying. And then you have, I like this touch. This is a little bit of added gore. This touch uh, that make you know where it's such a free for all. Things are going so crazy. Things are just going nuts here on this plane. And would be. I mean, if I was on a plane, all of a sudden like a shit ton of snakes started pouring out of every every crevice, I'd be fucking freaking out too. And so, but in the process, people are freaking out so much. This poor guy, he lands on the ground and he literally gets trampled so badly. He gets a he high heel in his ear. You see it too. He's on the ground. He's like, oh, oh, he's getting trampled on. And he gets a high heel, high heel, just, just, you know, breaks off right in his ear. You're like, ow. There's some other instances where things get so crazy uh, later in the film where they realize that. There's an upstairs in the first class area. That's where Sean's been the whole time. So the people are passionately pissed off. So that is mad free for all to get upstairs away from this, uh, uh, you know, uh, coach, which has all these snakes in it. 
and dead people. And so the one, and then it just causes the whole stairs with the fall apart. And this one guy falls down. He gets like broken glass stuck in his neck. Pulls it out. He's like, Whoa! this is like he basically slid. He basically gets his throat slit by broken glass because it's such this craziness of people just you know being impatient and freaked out. So I thought it did a pretty good job in that regard. The captain ends up getting beat by, bitten by a snake when he goes down into the. That's what I. That's like I said. That's what happened, which causes the whole free for all, and all the snakes start pouring out into coach. Uh, the captain actually went down into avionics to try to reset something to look around what's going on because the snake. I guess actually the snakes woke up, and the snake. I guess the snake was smart enough to take out the, the electronics. I, I, it's not a clever movie, so I can't really you know be that mad at it. But you know, but I'm like really. The snake's gonna be like, yeah, I'll take out the, uh, I'll take out the electronics and make it so the avionics isn't working. Ha! No power for you. <laughs> it's like really with the snake. It's like it just, it just, uh, it had to consciously bit those wires. Come on. But anyway, it's fine. It's okay. It just, it just a uh, you know sort of preposterous way to lead up to preposterous sequence of events where snakes end up on a plane and start, you know you know, snacking on people and biting them and all kinds of stuff like that. And so now, you know, there's snakes on the plane. It's messed up. It's just messed up. Sam Jackson realizes that there's enough people that end up making it out of coach and they end up getting back into this other part of the plane where they end up Samuel Jackson's like, you know, come on, get everything you can and put everything, make a barrier, a barrier from us and the snakes. And there's, uh, I thought it was a good scene where Lynn Shea, here's a baby crying she realizes that the mother that had her baby, she had fallen down in the scuffle and got knocked out. And her baby is still in the same room, so Lynn is still in the coach with all these snakes. And and like I said, dead people. The film does cut back to literally the gruesome scenes of like people like their mouths frothing from the you know venom and so forth, and and like sores or snakes crawling out you know out of people's mouths and stuff like that, and. Uh, there was even like a really sad scene where like this couple, which you just barely learned a little bit about, you just learned that this guy's kind of a hypochondriac and he's freaked out and he's freaked about being on a plane. And there was, uh, there was also a clever gag in one scene where someone goes in to get the barf bag ah! and then a snake pops out of the barf bag and fucking bites him and bites him in the face. I was like, what? How was that even? How did the snake even get it? Who cares? Who cares? That was, that was a fun gag. Uh, and so then you have the whole thing where this couple, you barely know enough about them, except that, you know, they chose to go to Hawaii on their honeymoon, despite, you know, her, you know, husband's issues, his hypochondriac. It's like, you know, why'd you do on a plane? Because I did it for you, honey. And they were actually, I thought they were written, written well enough, they acted well enough, these characters. I don't even remember their names, but the fact that I actually felt bad when they got killed by snakes made the film did a pretty good job in that regard, in terms of character development. So anyway... You have, so Lin Shea goes in to save the baby and the mother, and she ends up sacrificing herself pretty much because she gets bit by a snake. And throughout the rest of the film, she pretty much is, uh, you know, succumbing to the venom. And each, she has a few good lines, you know, like, oh, but, you know, this old broad had to go back on one more tour. And, you know, they're, the, the flight attendant friends of hers, like, come on, you know, you save that, you save that woman and her baby. That's enough reason to, you know, you know, you did something, you know, you did the right thing, you, you know, there's a reason why you got on this flight, you saved the woman and her baby, it's like, yeah, I did, that's worth it, and it was, it really was, and I really didn't feel too bad, I felt bad when then Shay died, too, so, um, so anyway, there's even like a whole, there's, you know, so eventually Sam Jackson ends up trying to talk to Joanna Margarelles to try to get her help on the scenario, he tries to see if they have any weapons, any knives or anything. We don't have any knives. All we have is these. <laughs> it's like, all we have is this. And she holds up a spork. And, and, and Sam Jackson's like, sporks? <laughs> it was like, it was like, you know, was like it was, you know, pretty much Sam Jackson said everything. Said Everything that he said is pretty much the kind of stuff that I would say if I was in the scenario. That's why I really liked his character. And all the while, Sean's being still held up in, a, in first class. Then things start to get, snakes start to pour in through the, barriers that they built up with the suitcases and so forth and the people freak out and then find out Sean's up in first class so they try to go up there Sam Jackson ends up figuring things out calming people down and you know 
you know, pretty much makes it so everyone, you know, won't just run up there, but that happens anyway. Like, everyone, like, runs up there to the point where they just mess things up. But eventually, later in the film, they actually do all go up to first class, and they cleverly uh, inflate a life raft and put it over the opening so the snakes can't get through. Um, and... But before that, there's actually an anaconda. So it got up in the window or some kind of air shaft and falls right through the to the ground and it's slithering around. And that's where you have the asshole British guy feeds Mercedes' dog to it. Like, what an asshole. You're a freaking dickhead. What? And and then he ends up getting eaten himself. Of course, he gets his comeuppance, and uh, in the form he gets you know he gets his just desserts in the form of the anaconda, which you know strangles his you know wraps around his ass and eats him. And I was I couldn't be happier. I was like, yeah, eat that British fuck hole. So anyway, uh, <laughs> eat that British twat for for being an asshole. Anyway, um. So then, all the while, there's people, they, they, you know, some of the venom, some of the snake's venom doesn't react right away. You don't die right away. So some people got bit, and they're, and they are, you know, succumbing to the, you know, to the venom, and, you know, they need anti-venom. And there's actually, a, a kid was bitten, too. There was a kid who was bitten by a rattlesnake. I think he was bit by a cobra or a rattlesnake. He was bit by a snake, a poisonous snake, and this poor little kid... And there's a nice scene where the mother of the baby in the film, she finds a way to use olive oil and uses her earring to cut open the kid's wound, suck out the poison. And then you have a funny joke where where uh, the guy, one of the security guards for the rapper guy, he got bit on the ass. So he's like, oh, all right. Because there's like, just like, we got to suck out the poison. He's like, I'll do it. It's like, no, you're not sucking my butt. He was like, you're not sucking nothing, man. You're not sucking nothing. And then have the whole thing where after the the you know the the woman the mother of the baby she you know she after she you know does the whole thing where she um um find her name uh Maria when Maria you know just cuts the wound and sucks out the poison of course the the security guard guy is like all right yeah yeah he's like I I'm next and then the other and then Keenan Thompson's like hey man hey. Hey, I got a cut. I got a bite too. I got bit too. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny, and um, so then pretty much what happens is Sam Jackson uh, ends up trying to contact his FBI guys, FBI guy pal Bobby Carter Valet, uh, Hank Harris, and tells him about what's going on. There's snakes on this fucking plane, and I need, I need, I need the snake expert. Whatever, we need to figure something out. So Hank gets a snake expert. And uh, the snake expert, you know, I thought did a good job. Was played by Todd Luiso as Dr. Stephen Price, and he tells them about, you know, we need I need all the information on all of these, all of these snakes, which kind of snakes there are, and everything. And he's like, make it fast. Time is tissue. And I love the whole sort of conversation he has with the snake expert guy, uh, Sam Jackson, and he figures out like. You know, can you get pictures? Can you get anything of these snakes? And it's like, uh, I don't know what kind of snakes they are. I know there's like one that has a hood. I think there's a cobra. I think there's one that's a rattlesnake. I don't know anything else. It's like, well, I need that. When it's important for the animal. And I like the whole thing where where he tells them, like, you know, probably, you know, why is the snake acting so crazy? It's probably because of a pheromone or something. Uh, it makes them uh, react. It makes them uh, really aggressive. It's like a drug, so to speak. And then I love Neville. I love Neville Flynn Sam Jackson's reaction to Doctor Price. He's like, "Well, that's good news. Snakes on crack. <laughs> Snakes on crack. That's good news. Snakes on crack." And that just made me crack up as much. <laughs> that made me crack up so much. Snakes on crack. Crack is whack. <laughs> you know, really, it made that I haven't laughed that much at a crack joke since the the the, the public service announcement in the eighties with Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> That wasn't supposed to be funny, but try not to laugh your ass off at Paul Rubens dressed as Pee Wee Herman, and then like this really super serious, you know, clip, and then he had the light, the spotlight shines on him. He gets some crack, and he's like, "This is crack." <laughs> this is so. I was like, you know, and these are snakes on crack. <laughs> uh, uh, so, yeah. but anyway, I thought it was pretty funny. But anyway, so the rest of the film pretty much is there's some more scenes where there's some more snakes trying to, you know, attack some more people, cannon fodder, so to speak. And ultimately, you know, they got to find the anti-venom. 
Uh, Sam Jackson finds a dead snake. Uh, Mercedes uses her, you know, and then and then at the time, 2006, a pretty, you know, pretty high end uh, picture phone to take a picture of, of the snake. And it's funny, it's like, oh, we have phones now that can do that. We can take a picture and send an email. Oh, okay. Like, it was so amazing then, and top of the line, and, 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 and really, you know, not the normal thing in, in 2006. But now it's like, come on, everybody has smartphones, so it's not that far-fetched. So I got a kind of a chuckle out of that. I uh, thought it was just, oh, that's amazing. Oh, you can email and take a picture on your phone? Oh, my God! Uh, um... <laughs> So anyway, take a picture of the snake and send it to the snake guy, snake expert guy, and you know, find the snake expert, the snake guys who legally sold all these snakes to Billy Kim to smuggle them on the plane. Hank Harris chases after them. They get the anti venom. All the while, you have this sort of drama going on with who's going to control the plane. Uh, one of the pilots. Uh, the guy who was played by, you know, the comedian uh, guy, David Kirkner, Kirkner. Uh, you know, he's looks like he might have gotten eaten by the snakes, but he gets back up. He's got his hands swollen up, swollen up like a balloon. He's like a fly's baby, what a harm. And then he ends up dying later, though. So now they're left with no complaint captain or anybody to fly the plane. So they figure out, try to find out somebody on, on board who would fly the plane. And that happens to be... Keenan Thompson's character Troy, and you know it's basically his uh, the rapper guy says, you know you can do it, you can do it, Troy, you can do it, you you can do it. It's like I don't know, man. It's like you can do it, Troy. You're my boy. Come on, Troy, you can do it. It's like yeah, 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 yeah. I can do it. I can fly this baby. I got you know. So you find out, of course, that he really doesn't know how to fly a plane. It's only a flight simulator. And then you know he gets in the cockpit, and that's in Gene. That's where you have the scene where Sam Jackson is like, you know, I've had it with these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane. And, um, also earlier in the film, you, you, you can see why Sam Jackson is pissed. He lost his partner to a, to a snake. Cobra bit him right in the chest. And, uh, so he's pissed at these damn snakes. Uh, later, early, you know, later in the film, before this whole scene, he had to go in and turn the, the air conditioning back on because people were going to die because there's not enough, you know, no air. People don't, you know, pretty much aren't going to be able to breathe. And they're also really hot, but they're going to run out of air. So he has to go into avionics and, you know, f use a flamethrower, kind of makeshift flamethrower Julian and Margot has created for him. And uh, go in there, he fights up a couple of snakes, turns on the air, gets back out, and then he ends up, you know, doing the whole thing where now he's, he's come to the idea, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open some windows. So he ties, you know, something around his waist along uh, and uh, so they can... Uh, so he and Troy can open the door while he shoots out the windows so they can blow all this, you know, basically use the, the air pressure to, to blow all the snakes out of the plane. And he shoots out the windows, snakes get blown out of the plane, and he, he and Troy get in the cockpit. Troy starts, you know, getting the plane figured out. They end up, uh, you know, earlier also in the film, since Kirkner, Kirkner is dead, uh, Sam Jackson and Joanna Margulies Margule had to, you know, all their might try to lift the plane up so it wouldn't crash into the ocean and they were able to do it just in time before it crashed into the ocean so now they're you know so now you have the whole sort of thing where sam jackson is sitting there and uh troy keenan thompson is in the cockpit and try to land the plane talking to the air traffic controller guys everyone's from Gore's guys is like what oh he has an experience with a game a video game get somebody who has real flight experience on in the cockpit right now get him out of there it's like well you are talking to the guy with flight experience. So I like the whole thing where they end up uh, landing. The, and, and everything ends up being okay. I like the whole thing where they're about to land. And that's what he tells the whole thing. is like, what? You don't, you don't really play the video game? It's like, yeah, it's a flight simulator, man. It's, it's like the real thing. Oh, God. <laughs> and, and, you know, and then the whole of course. It's like, do you want to land? You want to land this thing? I, you know, it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> they, end up landing. they end up landing safely, though. And I love Keenan Thompson's reaction. It's hilarious because he keeps talking about how his brother keeps bragging about how higher his score is on the flight simulator game. And I like I like uh, Sam Jackson's uh, line of dialogue too. And it's like, oh, praise it to the PlayStation. <laughs> and then I like I like uh, I like his line. You know, it's like turn this big motherfucker left, Troy. Turn it left. 
And I like I like the whole thing where he pretty much says, you know, Troy is talking. He basically is talking about his his brother, and he's like, "Fuck Brandy, fuck Brandy in his high school. That's my own brother, and I say fuck him." <laughs> oh man! So I land the plane. Everyone's safe and sound. There's a, there's a, like it sort of kind of almost kind of a twist. It kind of seems like where Sam Jackson, a snake ends up popping up and bites Sean, and Sam Jackson shoots him. So almost you kind of think, like, oh, shit, is, like, Sean really in on this or some shit? What what the fuck? Is he a criminal? What? But then you find out, no, he, was just, he just shot the snake off of him, and he put a bulletproof vest on him. So then Sean goes off to bang that other flight attendant chick and teach, and basically the end of the movie is Sean teaching Sam Jackson how to, sh how to surf. He's like, you know, do what I say. You know, he just says, like, remember what you told me? He was like, you know, what? I'm trying to find it. Remember what he's told? Remember what you told me? I'm trying to find that final repeated line here. So like, what was the first thing I ever said? Do as I say and you'll live. And he says, like, do as I say and you'll live. <laughs> So then, then you know they have that whole sort of thing, and I, I'll I'll use I'll use the the quote on one of the quotes that Troy said Troy said in this movie, Kenan Thompson. This shit's bananas. It's pretty much that's pretty much it is. It is a really out there, wild and crazy movie. It's got a decent amount of laughs in it. Um, it's not particularly smart, but it doesn't have to be. It's a really fun flick. Uh, if it took itself seriously, it'd be boring. I'm glad it didn't do that. Didn't, I'm glad it didn't go that route. And in a lot of ways, you it's best to kind of look at this film as a comedy. Because it pretty much is. It's pretty much a, a horror comedy, so to speak. It's it's not really a serious, plain hijacking movie. It is totally an over-the-top, silly sort of comedy. And I think it's a horror comedy. It's, it's one of the better ones I've seen. I've had a really good time with it once I got myself in the right mood. Um, I looked at it as a film that wasn't meant to be taken seriously, and that's important when you watch this movie. It is not meant to be taken seriously at all, at all. It is not Shakespeare. It is not the gospel. You, you got to take it, you know, uh, like I said, it's best to look at it as a comedy. Um, but I thought for a movie, you know, called Snakes on the Plane, it delivered on its promise. There were snakes, and they were on a plane. And there were a lot of different snakes, and a lot of different colors, and a lot of different breeds, and they did a lot of different things. And I thought they did a good idea, good job with the premise. As ridiculous as it is, they made it actually suspenseful, in my opinion, at points, and thrilling. And um, helped to get Sam Jackson just being a badass. Now, I'm going to, any kind of trivia, I'm just going to, the movie was pretty much a bomb. It was really too bad, though. I mean, it was a huge internet phenomenon. It became an internet sensation, so much so that it got a, a book about the internet sensation. And a budget of $33 million and made a $62 million uh, box office gross. But that was uh, combining worldwide grosses. In the U.S., it didn't do very well. It only made $18 million. So it really didn't do as well as New Line had hoped. New Line really went all out with it. They even, made, they even published a novelization. It was like 400 pages. Yeah, a 400-page novelization of Snakes on a Plane. Like, you're like, and they delved into more on the backstory of the characters pretty much for 400 pages. Um, here's a little bit of the trivia here. In March of 2006, New One Cinema do a massive fan interest on the internet, allowed for a five day reshoot to film new scenes to take the movie from a PG 13 to an R rated film. Among these additions is Samuel Jackson's character's line, had it with these motherfucking snakes on, these motherfucking pla on this motherfucking plane. A line that originated in, in an anticipatory internet parody of the movie. And so, and this even spawned like a shitty direct to video, like sci fi asylum movie, Snakes on a Train, which I'm not watching. I'm not watching Snakes on a Train. It is not happening. Um, but it was really popular in the internet. And it was actually one of those rare instances where studios actually listened to the fans. Holy shit. But then it didn't make any money. So then it that didn't really help the studios any. And didn't really give them any reason to continue to listen to the fans, so to speak. Um, there's a sort of, sort of uh, you know, there's 450 snakes that were used in the film, including a 22 foot long Burmese python, um, a live diamondback rattlesnake, which actually find, found in Phoenix, Arizona, in a Phoenix, Arizona AMC theater during an August 2006 screening. 
and another rattler was found nearby in their parking lot. In the parking lot. Ooh, eerie. Contrary to popular belief, Samuel Jackson's agent insisted that the title be changed because Jackson couldn't work on a film with such a title. When Jackson heard about all of this, he responded with the much-cited comment, we're totally changing that back. That's the only reason why I took the job. I read the title. <laughs> Most snakes were digitally created because the real snakes did not move as much as the filmmakers wanted. Ask the filmmakers of Raiders of the Lost Ark about that. About that issue. Because they had the same problem. This film's title originated at an after at an after work happy hour among Hollywood colleagues to see who would come up with the most awful pitch for a movie. Producer Craig Berenson, who worked at Dream Jam Works at the time, gave his pitch for this movie based on a script called Venom. Shia LaBeouf was offered a role but turned it down. The snakes in the film would be more likely to attack each other than humans. They would not deliver a fatal dose of Buena, most likely, and would give a dry bite if they did bite instead of hide. Okay, yeah, that's like I said, if, if it was a realistic Snakes on a Play movie, it'd be boring, because that would happen. Not very many snakes would do anything. They'd just kill each other, and if they did bite you, it'd be a dry bite. So there might be a few people who might die of Venom, but it wouldn't be that exciting. So I'm glad they didn't take it seriously at all. Um, when Sean mentions how hot it is, Agent Flynn responds with, the line, I'm from Tennessee, I hadn't noticed. And Samuel Jackson actually is from Tennessee. The fake working title that was written on the clappers was Anaconda 3. <laughs> this is a lot better than Anaconda 3. There is an Anaconda th there is an Anaconda 3, and this is a lot better than Anaconda 3. Ronnie Yu was attached to direct, speaking enthusiastically about the project, but he bowed out doing following budget disputes and creative di differences. He was replaced by David R. Ellis. I think David R. Ellis did a good job, you know, as a replacement. I really, I really did think he did a good job. Um, David R. Ellis, I like his work in Found Destination 2. I thought he did a good job in the movie Cellular. And I thought his directing this was pretty solid. You know, he, you can tell he had a lot of fun with this, with this project, with this, with this film. And here's a quote from Sam Jackson when he was, you know, when he was asked about pretty much what would happen, you know, um, he was asked about the uh, joking that the film would win the MTV Movie Award for Best Film, which I don't think it did. And he's like, no movie shall triumph over snakes on a plane. Unless I happen to feel like making a movie called More Motherfucking Snakes on More Motherfucking Planes. <laughs> and the, 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 the film was actually, when it was aired on TV, they had the dub shit. So he had this hilarious, you know, dub of the, the infamous line. Which, you know, instead of, I've had it with these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane, instead it was replaced with, I've had it with these monkey fighting snakes on this Monday to Friday plane. It's like, what? Makes no goddamn sense. So, of course, typical of a lot of shitty TV dubbings, like Scarface, you know, you know, where it talks about, you know, this town is like a chicken waiting to be plucked. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just stick your head in the toilet. <laughs> And here, you can hit a toilet and see fits. And here, it's even more nonsensical. Um, or like the infamous, you know, bad, the infamous TV dub of Robocop, you know. Instead of saying, fuck me, fuck me, the, the, the robber guy, when he sees Robocop at the convenience store, he's like, why me? Why me? Why me? That makes as much sense as this. Had it, up, had it with these monkey fighting snakes on this Monday to Friday play. Uh, so PC, it's hilarious. Anyway, uh, I really don't know what to say about Snakes on a Plane, except I had a lot of fun with this flick. I recommend if you're looking for a movie, just to sit back and just watch, just not, turn your brain off and just have a good time. Snakes on a Plane is one of those flicks. Got to look at it as a horror comedy, and I think you'll have a, a, a fun time. You know, I think you'll have a, you know, I certainly did. I thought it was a fun ride. Anyway, if it was rated out of five stars, too, I gave it four and a half out of five stars. Not very many issues with me. I really enjoyed it, you know, a lot. If there's sort of problems. Um, Sam Jackson really didn't do that much, but he did a good did enough. That's really the only thing I can think of. There's really not a lot of problems I have with the film, to be honest. I think for what it is, it's it did a really good job. Anyway, thanks for watching my review of Snakes on a Plane. And I will see you guys later. See ya.